So let's look at my face. Let's see if it's a little busted. Oh, it's a little bit busted. So let's just reshape it a tiny bit. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here and today I'm doing a highly requested video. I get this video requested like every other second of the day, I swear to you. And I've done so many of them. I actually have a full Instagram series here on my channel, which I'll make sure to link in the description box below. You'll see it probably scrolling right down here somewhere. I just personally love taking and editing photos. I've been doing it for so long and I love sharing my tips and tricks with you guys. And of course, I know for a fact that you guys like to see it as well. And I personally love seeing other people's editing videos because I always pick up on something new in every single editing video. So I thought I would do one for 2018 since it is the new year and I haven't done one in quite a while and honestly my editing style I think has changed the most but if you guys have never seen my Instagram before uh, it is on the screen I'll put it here it's at I'm Drew Scott I definitely suggest following me if you're watching this video you know you might as well I'm giving you all these tips so the least you can do is follow me on Instagram no I'm just kidding but if you want to you can I post about like men's style and also a lot of just like flat lays and like pretty photos in general so if you just like pretty imagery and like pretty filters and stuff definitely give it a follow it's at I'm Drew Scott and I'll make sure to link in the description box too of course a follow is always loved so I have four main tips on how to take your Instagram photos and these are just like little tips that definitely can help you out and give you like a much more cleaner crisper like more professional looking photo in the end and I think that they can just be things that you can keep in the back of your head next time you're taking your photo first one is to always 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 wipe your camera lens I never did this before and I was always be like oh my gosh my photos just like a little bit blurry but honestly if you take photos and then you wipe the lens and you take them again you will see the most insane difference a lot can transfer onto this tiny little camera lens here and when something's on there it really honestly makes a difference and you really it's kind of hard to tell when you're taking the photo like you could take a photo and be like oh wow this is like pretty Pretty clear but then you actually wipe the lens and realize how much more clear the photo can actually be my next tip is for someone who likes to take outfit photos or photos of themselves and this is when you have your photographer take your photo it's just to have them get lower down so when a photographer takes an outfit photo at like eye level like this like you're taking your photo standing up you're gonna look super super short and almost squished but if they kind of squat down and almost tilt their camera up like this so they're taking it like this you're against this wall here they tilt their camera up like this and take the photo it's gonna really elongate the body and it kind of makes you look a little bit more slim and also a lot more taller which is in the end more of a flattering look um, so if you want to go for that look I definitely suggest with having your photographer get a little bit lower to the ground and shooting a little bit higher up I actually have an entire video on how to pose and take outfit photos which is almost at 1 million views which is insane so that will be linked um, all my Instagram series stuff will be linked below so that gives you a couple more tips than I'm just giving in this video now my next tip is one I used to live by it I would live by this so like everything I did had to be following this tip and it was to make sure all of your lines are perfectly symmetrical but lately I have been into sort of like the shifted lines and kind of the more warped photos For I used to always make sure that the horizon line kind of where the floor met the wall was super straight on the photo but now I don't really mind if it's a little bit shifted and I kind of think it gives more of an editorial kind of candid feel to the photo which I've personally been liking but I do think if you're going for a more professional feed or if maybe you've been doing a lot of those tilted photos but you're kind of wondering like why your feed isn't looking as symmetrical and perfect as it could be just try to line up your line so if there's a line in the photo going up and down try to make sure that it goes perfectly straight up and down but this is also something that you could do with editing um, Visco has a lot of great tools which I'll show you in the editing portion to warp your photo so you can do like a vertical incline a horizontal incline or you can just like sort of uh, twist your photo a little bit and just make sure that the lines are all nice and linear on the photo Oh guys, I also forgot to mention that I got a facial last night, like really late at night last night. So if my face looks a little bit busted in this video, that is 100% why. So just like try not to look at it. And last but not least, this last tip for taking photos is one that all of my friends, anybody I meet, anyone I see taking an Instagram photo and I see it blown out like on their screen, like I swear to you guys, I will see people on the street like taking a photo. I will walk up to them and tell them this tip because it is a lifesaver and a lot of people don't know about it. So basically what it is, is when you click what was that? Essentially what this tip is, is it is adjusting the exposure of your photo before it's taken. So you don't have to edit it out. And sometimes you can't even edit it out like when you're overexposed. So basically you click on the screen and you pull up or down. You'll actually, when you click, you'll see a little box pop up with a sun to the right of it. But if you click on the screen and then drag your finger up and down on the screen, you can actually adjust it to be darker or brighter, which is amazing, especially when you're shooting on dark backgrounds. So sometimes I'm wearing a full black outfit, but I want to shoot it on a black wall and I want it to look really dark 
and really moody. But when you take it just by clicking on the screen, which a lot of people don't know you can adjust the exposure, you become super overexposed and it's just not a flattering photo. But if you click and drag down quite a bit, you can actually pull that exposure down and take such an incredible photo that looks like it was taken on a camera. Okay guys, so it might look a little bit different and that is because I am filming the editing portion the following day. Essentially the iPhone X just messed up the screen recording completely, it didn't save it. So confused, it's actually done this like multiple times. I don't even suggest the screen recording on the iPhone X because it never saves for me for some reason, so. And I first wanna jump into the editing portion of this video by talking about the apps that I personally use. I have a folder and I do have quite a few, but only a couple of them are necessary. So let's first jump into the first ones and I'm kinda gonna give you guys like a tiny little brief description of each. So the first app I use is Facetune, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know what Facetune is. I mainly use these for a couple of reasons. Facetune I use to reshape my hair because my hair always looks kinda crazy in photos, especially Especially if it's windy out. So I use it to reshape my hair, smooth my skin, add details to like my eyes or add details to my clothing pieces, so on and so forth. And then also I use a whitening tool just to whiten the backgrounds of some things. The next app is called Unum, which is a really cool app. You can actually plan your Instagram feed in here. So essentially you can um, put your photos in here and sort of test them out. You can move them around, switch blocks. You can even uh, click on here and then at the bottom right here, click this little grid icon and you can kind of delete things from your feed and see what looks better. And that's just kind of like a temporary deleting from your feed like this is sort of like a copy of your feed on the Unum app and you can sort of delete it all and then click it and they come back. So it's just a really nice app for that Instagram aesthetic like creative person. The next app is Visco which I'm sure all of you guys know how Visco works and this is just like the main editing app that I use. It has all of my filters. I use Visco to mainly edit and then Snapseed really cool because it's really nice for like adjustments on certain parts of photos. So the tools that I use on Snapseed are only the selective tool, this one here, where you can click and increase brightness or decrease brightness and sort of put that on a place that you want. You can also adjust contrast, saturation, and structure. But then another tool that I really like to use is the tonal contrast tool because I really feel like it gives your photos like such a high def look as you can see here. And then the rest of these apps are kind of just like more creative apps. So glitch gives you like a little glitched effect on your photo. I'll make sure to give an example on the screen. Inlight is really nice just to um, paint filters on. So they have lots of different filters in there. And sometimes if I shoot and the background's really colorful and I can't like whiten it enough in Facetune, you can put it inside of Enlight and you can put a black and white filter on it, but then just paint the black and white filter where you want it to, which I like that feature. Um, and I know you can also do that in Facetune, but I just typically use Enlight for that. Made 2 is really nice if you want to do some sort of like face editing, like skin smoothing or like hair adjustments. Boomerang, you all know what that is. Fonto is really nice if you want to add text to your photos. There's like a trillion different fonts in there. Retouch is such a cool app because this app lets you delete stuff. You can scrub over an area that you don't like in a photo and it will literally delete a whole person, but blend it into the background it's crazy so analog film is also a really neat app Cassie and Richie actually told me about this Cassie I think uses this all the time and it's just like a film sort of editing app so you can apply any of these filters on there and you could adjust them um, to different percentages and it gives you a very like film look which I kind of like and I apply to some of my photos and then lastly pick has been one of my new favorite apps and the reason I use this app is just for my collages that I do on Instagram so a lot of you guys always ask how I create like collaged photos and pick art is really nice for that because it lets you do free form collages. So if you click the plus down here and click collage, but then you click freestyle, you can create your very own freestyle collage. And can you just like check this out? Like I'll just put two things here really quick to show you. So as you can see, there's two images here. You can click and sort of adjust each. So adjust the opacity, you can increase the size of them. Um, you can even increase the size of like the actual thing. So you can make it like an, a larger Instagram photo and then you can create collages. You can add stickers, text, whatever you want. So that's really cool for the collage photos. I have three photos that I want to edit with you guys today because I can't just edit everything. I actually thought it would be cool to do like a YouTube live where I just edit Instagrams or like an Instagram live where I just edit Instagram photos. I think I'd have to do a YouTube live because I'd have to like connect it up somehow. Let me know if you guys think that's a good idea, but let's just jump into editing. So I first always start off in Visco and the three photos I'm going to edit are these three at the top right here. It's two different outfit photos. One's more scenic and then one's more just on a solid color wall and I sort of do different editing things for either of these. So I'll show you those tips and tricks and then one's just a flat lay. So there's three different ones here and let's just jump into this first one here, which is this pink one that I took on the Acne Studios building that they're putting in. So let's just jump in here and I want to share with you guys, I put my favorite filters at the front here. So these are all like the random filters, but then this little section here are my favorites. So as you can see, starting from left to right, my favorite filters are 04, A4, A6, J5, J3, M5, and M6. And I do have like three favorite filters from these. My favorites are A4, 
um, J5 and M5. For this photo, I'm pretty sure I used A4 when I edited it, and I just sort of applied a little bit of A4 on there. So I'm just going to do that, and then I'm going to go into the adjustment itself, and I always do a crop because you can crop to the exact Instagram size here, which is this 4 or 5 crop right here, and this will give you the perfect Instagram cropping. And then you can also do like a heightening adjustment here. Use the Y skew, and you can make yourself look taller, which I love doing this all the time. The Y skew is really nice for that, and then I'll always just add a little bit of sharpness to the photo. Photo. and you can always zoom in and sort of check what it looks like so this is looking really nice so far skin tone where you can sort of go in and adjust your skin tone because sometimes it, your skin is a little bit more yellow or a little bit more red and let's just adjust exposure like a little bit and see what happens um, I'm probably not gonna adjust exposure too much maybe like a tiny tiny bit of contrast and that's probably what I'll do in Visco. So this is the before and after with that A4 filter and my slight little adjustment. So as you can see, it just looks so much prettier. So I just opened up that photo inside of Facetune. And what I'm going to do once I'm in Facetune is I'm probably just going to tweak my hair a tiny bit. And so what I always do is I just sort of lower my hairline just a tiny, tiny bit. Because sometimes at different angles, it just looks a little bit crazy. And then I'm also going to push my hair out a little bit. So... This one's kind of hard because there's like a text right there, but, and that's honestly all I'm going to do. It's not very much, but it's just like a slight little adjustment. And um, another thing, if you have facial hair, sometimes like lighting can really affect that. So if you use the picker tool and sort of just click on a facial hair area, you can actually go in and just tap on the screen like this. As you can see, I'm tapping and you can almost fill in any of those gaps that you don't like. Your hairline looks a little sparse. You can sort of fill it in a little bit and it just makes it look a little bit fuller which I don't think in any way this is like photoshopping your face. But what I really love in this app is the one called Details. So I'll take this and I'll just sort of scrub it over almost everything, like on the outfit. It really makes it pop, as you can see. I also don't really like how the floor looks like a tiny bit blue here. I'm gonna use a tool called Whiten, and I'm just gonna scrub over the entire floor area. And when something's just like a tinge bit of blue, because I've lately been editing super warm tones, so I hate when like the ground or a wall looks blue, I'll sort of take it out and as you can see, it removes Moves that blue tone. I'll go in here and make it the largest size and edit and then I might just adjust it like a little bit with brightness, contrast, maybe I'll pull out a tiny bit of shadows to show the outfit a little bit more and then maybe even like a little bit of fade. I've been adding that lately to sort of tone down the blacks and this is probably, this would be my finished edit for this photo. This was also taken on a phone, but I'm going to share with you guys how to get such a cool like sun flare effect with this photo. And I think for this photo, I'm actually going to use M5 because it's one of my favorite filters. Like just look how pretty it makes your photo look. And I'm just going to probably use about 8.1, I guess. And I'm also going to increase the exposure just a little bit because my face is kind of lost there. And I'll also probably sharpen it up a bit and always, always, always crop your photo so you know what you're working with. I like to crop almost everything at 4 or 5. Just got to make sure all my screen recordings are still working. I literally have like four of them working down here. And then I might also do a little bit of Y skew, but I don't want to do it that much because my lines are going to come off of the screen. And then I might just recrop this so I'm a little bit more centered. See how that made me just like slightly a bit taller? And this is probably all I'll do on Visco. I mainly just use Visco to color and then maybe add a little bit of grain to this too because I just love the way grain looks and this looks like it should be a grainy photo. And then I'm going to go into that app called Pick Art, the one that I shared with you guys earlier. And this app is so nice for sun flares. You click here, click edit, and you're going to load that photo in that you just did um, and then I'm gonna use what's called lens flare and I'm just gonna pick one of these that looks good like for example I'm thinking maybe maybe like this one looks fun oh this one's kind of big and you could adjust the size of it which is nice so it's like adjust it like this and maybe scrunch it up into a little area and just put it where you want the lens flare to be. So for example, I want it to be like right here under my neck. I'm actually gonna replace that lens flare because that one was just like a little bit too crazy. So I kind of want to tone it down a little bit. So let's go in with this one here. So this one's just like a little bit more of a faint lens flare, but this will be nice. You can sort of put it in, put it in one of these open gaps. Like right there is perfect. And that gives you like such a cool like sunlit effect that looks like it was taken at sunset. And the last thing that I'm going to do on this photo is put it into Facetune just to do some slight adjustments. So let's look at my face. Let's see if it's a little busted. Oh, it's a little bit busted. So let's just reshape it a tiny bit. Um, and the only thing that I'm going to do is probably pull my hair out here and then flatten it on the top. So it's nice when you have a tree like this because you can never tell when it's warped. 
So I'm just gonna do like a tiny bit of warping to my hair. I mean like, I really don't care. So I'm just gonna warp just a little bit. I'm probably just gonna pull my forehead in like the slightest little bit, but I'll probably just do something like Maybe like this. And after I do that little bit of hair adjustment, I am just going to go into details and just sort of add a couple little details back to the outfit and show you how to do that. But this also needs a bit of whitening on the shoe because as you can see, it's a little bit yellow and I just want the shoe to be super, super white and clean. So I'm going with the whitening tool just to make those shoes pop a little bit. I'm gonna show you the selective tool because this can help you guys when your outfit's not really showing as much in the photo. Maybe it's too backlit or, um, for example, this one was kind of backlit because it was pretty bright in the background. If you use the tools button and then you click selective, you can place it on top here and sort of minimize it and then brighten up the top half of your outfit. Like, look at this. It's not amazing. You can really re-brighten your outfit and just make it pop a lot more. So I'll also do it to the pant area. It's gonna be my finished photo. So you can keep it dark like this, but I would probably post it a bit more brighter like this because I think it just looks a lot more pretty. And then I'm going to save it. So many people love my flat lays and just ask about them. And I'm not trying to like brag, like, mm, my flat lays are the best, but you guys ask me about them all the time. So that's why I'm gonna do it. And this is a flat lay I took. So first I'm gonna go into Visco once again, and I'm gonna crop and adjust this first because it took it at a weird little like thing so I'm gonna first straighten it out so it looks like this then I'm going to use the crop tool and use a 4-5 crop I actually kind of just like how it adjusted it there I think I'm gonna use a4 for this um, m5 just looks a little bit too warm this looks a little bit boring this looks purple um, O4 is kind of harsh, so I'm going to use A4 and just adjust it down a little bit and then I'm going to adjust things like kind of accordingly. This was actually taken with artificial lighting, which sounds weird, but I took this photo at like 2 a.m. with some st uh, studio lights, so I'm trying to make it look as daylight as possible. And probably what I'm going to do is of course sharpen the photo some and then maybe even pull down the saturation a little bit. I might add a bit more warmth to the photo here. I'm gonna add a little bit of grain so it looks a little bit grainy because I love that look lately and then a tiny little bit of fade as well. But let's go into Facetune and sort of pull out a little bit of the background color because it's kind of like a slight tinge of like aqua and you'll see what I mean when I start whitening. whitening. So I'm gonna use the whitening tool and just sort of go in and when I do stuff like this, I don't like to whiten it like perfectly, but can you see this Polaroid? Like watch, if I go around the edge of this Polaroid here, especially this one, sort of just go around and whiten. Tiny little like minute stuff like this can just make it look so much better and you wouldn't even really notice like this looks white, but then when you whiten it, you're like, wow, that's really nice and white. Okay, and then let's look at the before and after. See that's just, it just makes it look so much cleaner and pretty. And I'm just gonna check mark that and then use the details and sort of just tap on top of some of the main areas uh, just to add a little bit more detail in. So I'm just gonna like go around this little thing here. So then I'm gonna add this in as if I'm posting it. So let's just put this here. And I just love using the Instagram editing tool. So I'll sort of just adjust honestly everything and see how it looks. I'm gonna make it a bit darker. Um, I'm gonna pull the warmth up some, so it's a bit more warm, but I'm gonna pull down the saturation some. Honestly, probably pull the highlights down a little bit too. And then just sharpen. And this is exactly probably how I would post this photo to my Instagram and it would be ready to go. So guys, that was editing three images for you. I hope that gave you like a big idea of everything that I do. Of course, there are a couple editing apps I didn't go through and that's just because they're apps that you can just do like minute little things with. And I tried to give you examples of each just so you guys get an idea if you want to download it or not, but you can definitely play around with them. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at I'm Drew Scott. I would love to see you guys over there and I interact with you so much on Instagram. I just love being on there and just checking out your guys' Instagram, liking your pics and commenting back to you. So definitely do so and also subscribe to my channel for more videos if you would like to. You can also check out my Instagram series. There's tons of videos on Instagram editing below. That was the most self-promos ever, but you know what? You gotta self-promo yourself nowadays. Uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I love you all. I'll catch you next one. Bye, guys.